We've already seen a little bit about the collection view, but it's time to dive in a little bit deeper in this part of the Donut Maui Crash Course. Just to be sure, you came here through like the rest of the course, right? If not, this video is part of a crash course. The playlist should pop up on your screen right now. Make sure to follow it from start to finish. That way you will miss nothing. So let's talk more about the collection view because face it, the collection view is going to be a big part of any application basically because almost all applications show data in some shape or form um, that is listed. Like if you're getting records from a database about people, then you will add them in a list or if you have a list of monkeys for some reason and you add them in a list with a little image, you can do all kinds of crazy stuff. Stuff. Um, now, before I go deeper into the collection view, there's also the carousel view, which is literally an inheritance from the collection view. It's just a specialized implementation. If you go look at the code, like the carousel view is actually inheriting from collection view bits. And the carousel view is kind of like, you know, the applications where you have this horizontal scroll thing um, with the little dots usually uh, at the bottom where you see an image flipping over or you just have a list of data and you can endlessly loop through that list. Uh, maybe just like from the net. Netflix application, something like that. You scroll through all the TV shows. That is the carousel view that's very specialized in looping and, and showing data in a horizontal way. I think it has options for vertical as well, but um, a lot of the options that you're going to see today for the collection view also work for the carousel view. The carousel view has a couple of extra things. So for the collection view, we also have a lot of options and uh, we're just using the basic features actually right now. But for this video, what we're going to see is how to actually use pull to refresh, which is not specifically for the collection view, but you can definitely use it for the collection view as well. We'll see a couple of different layouts for the collection view. And in the end, we'll see how to actually add some um, nice image or message for the user whenever the list is empty um, so that the user actually knows that you know everything shows up nicely but there's just no data so um, with this actually let's just switch over to my screen and see how to do all of this awesomeness to follow along with all of this, uh, make sure to open the folder on your local disk. You've cloned the repository, the link you can find down in the video description below. Um, this is all part of a workshop that I'm following here, so be sure to have a look at that. Um, here we have part five collection view that has the uh, solution, that has the code for like where we left off in the previous video. So, um, you know, or if you have followed along with a single solution, that's fine as well. But you can open the solution and you should um, end up with kind of like the um, thing that we have here. So I have it here running on the Android emulator. Um, this is where we ended up with, we can do get monkeys, then we will get our list of monkeys. We have implemented this find closest button um, so we can find the closest monkey here. It's still Henry Phoenix. Uh, and if we go to the details of one monkey, we can click here on show on map and it will open the default maps application for um, this monkey and it will show it on the map with a little pin. Now, what we want to do is, you know, this list and the get monkeys, that's nice, but what is a very common um, user experience pattern is that we can pull this down this list and we can actually refresh the data like that. That is what you can do with a refresh view. Now I already mentioned the refresh view is not specifically for a collection view. You can also use it on a lot of other visual elements um, that kind of like have the scroll. You can use it on a scroll view if that's what you want. Um, so you can implement it many different ways but the uh, collection view is definitely one of them. If you're using the list view, so the list view is kind of like the predecessor for um, um, the collection view. Um, you shouldn't be really using it anymore. Um, it has the um, uh, pull to refresh built in, so you don't need to worry about that. You can use other things right there. Um, but for this collection view, we can definitely use it. So actually, let me stop running this here for a little bit. And we have this collection view here. So this is in our main page, right? This is our list of monkeys. And we have this collection view here um, with the item template and all the things that we've implemented earlier. Now here, what we can do is add a refresh view. So you can see it comes up nicely it will automatically add this closing tag here and we are going to cut that out and go to the bottom of our collection view and put it in here um, so that you know it's nicely wrapped in our collection view and then we can indent this a little bit nicer and we have a refresh view but uh, what we want to do because we are making this like uh, wrapping our collection view we want to move this grid.column span one level up so that it, you know, spans across the two columns that we have from our grid right here. Um, so we have that. And the other thing that you want to do is um, set the command. So we already have the command to get the monkey. So we can just say command, which is going to be the command whenever it uh, is going to be fired, whenever we do the pull to refresh. And we can say binding, um, get monkeys 
command. That was it. So we have that in place. This actually already works. Um, but what is happening, we also have this property here is refreshing. That is a property of the refresh view. Um, and you can say like, you know, if we pull down the collection view, it's going to set this e is refreshing to true. Um, but you have to set it to false because, you know, else it will just show a little loading indicator all the time. And we have to let the refresh view know that we're done loading our data and, and we're done for the normal UI flow to continue. Um, so what we want to do here is also set this to a binding and I'm going to set this to is refreshing, uh, which is something that I still need to implement so it doesn't know it. Um, binding is refreshing, we got that in place. Now let's go over to our solution explorer and I'm going to go to my view model and go to the monkeys view model. And in here, um, we can see that we have um, oh, we don't have the observable collection things here or the observable object things here for, um, oh, that was in our base view model, right? From the toolkit MVVM, uh, which is handled in a previous video. So go check that out. Um, so here we have all of this, the observable property, etc. cetera. Um, I can just, actually, it's more like the is busy. So let's just copy that one. I'm a lazy developer. I like copying things. Um, do that we don't need to also notify change four and this we're going to say not is busy but is refreshing and now we should automatically end up with a uh, property that we can use for the is refreshing um so whenever when are we done with loading our monkeys we do that in our get monkeys async and we're going to go on down here and in our finally we're also going to say is refreshing is false and because this is this um, observable property um, it's automatically going to be hooked into uh, from the XAML with the I notify property change all the things that we've seen in the previous video and our uh, UI will update nicely and actually this is all we need to do so let's just run this for Android um, because there's something interesting uh, while this is loading um, this kind of only works for Android and iOS because there you have like your touch um, input, right? For Windows, this isn't really implemented as far as I know, um, because the, the kind of like swipe to refresh is not really a thing there, um, at least if we are looking like the desktop environments. Um, and for macOS, I think kind of the same thing, although I'm not really sure how that works. Um, but this is mostly, you know, intended to, for use on the mobile platforms. So now, even if it doesn't show, we can already do the pull to refresh. If we can pull it down, you can see that little loading indicator. We can cancel it. If we go back up, then it doesn't do anything. Um, but if we pull it down and we keep it that way, then it will start loading. It will go through the flow and it will uh, disappear whenever our monkeys have loaded. So that's how easy it is to implement pull to refresh with the refresh view. And we can do this over and over again. I can just pull to refresh this again and it will load all the stuff again. Um, so, you know, that's how this works. Now, let's go over to the next thing, which is like the um, grid. Well, not, we're going to see a grid, but the collection view, other layouts. Um, and for that, we're just going to keep the application running. Um, I already mentioned it in a previous video. We have this XAML live preview here that just mirrors the screen from our emulator. So that's really cool. We can see the exact same thing going on here. Um, and we can go to our main page. And um, if we go to our collection view, so now this, this, um, layout here is a little bit messed up. Sorry about that. Um, but what we can do here with our collection view is um, say collection view dot um, items layout. And the items layout is something with which you can influence the layout. And by default, it's set to a linear items layout with a orientation of vertical. So if we set that, we will see nothing new. This is just our regular list as it is right now. Um, but you know, we can also set this to horizontal. And um, while while preparing this, I noticed that the horizontal, it does something weird. So I'm not sure if this is a bug in the hot reload, because you know, you can see it, I can just change these things, it will show up the changes automatically, which is really amazing, real productivity boost here. Um, or if this is a little bug that snuck into the collection view, um, because I'm still running on the preview bit while you're watching this. So um, um, something is going on here, but you should be able to use this linear items layout with horizontal. Um, you can do that, but there's other um, layouts as well. And you can actually, of course, also implement your own layout, right? So that's pretty cool as well. We can also switch this to the grid items layout, and we also can set the orientation for this. I think if we set it just to vertical um, without anything else, then it will go back to our kind of like um, default layout as well. But if we set the span here, which is really cool, we can set the span to three, and you can suddenly see that it goes to this grid layout with a span of three. So we have 
three rows of columns. That is pretty neat. And whenever you set it to horizontal, I'm not sure if we're going to see much changes here. Um, well, it, 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 I think we have to fiddle with like the um, uh, layout here that we've set some properties where it kind of like shows weird right now. Um, but now it would scroll kind of like horizontal and we still have that grid with a couple of columns, right? So this is the, the something very powerful where you can create all kinds of own cool, crazy layouts um, that you can do with this. So that is pretty amazing as well. Um, now let's do, um, let's, let's reset this to whatever it was. So um, just to, you know, make sure that we have uh, seen this, uh, let's set this to a linear layout and an orientation of vertical, just so we, um, you know, have this back again. This is like our default thing and makes the most sense for our monkeys, right? So let's just stick with that. And that's just the layout, right? Like I mentioned, the collection view has a ton of options. So uh, we kind of skipped over that in another video. We have this selection mode. Um, so right now we've kind of implemented this. Um, let's see if I can find it here on the frame, this gesture um, recognizer for the tab you know, on which monkey we tap. But you can also work with um, the collection view and then set the selection mode. I think you can set it to um, single or multiple. So you can just select one or, or you can even select multiple. And then we also have like commands and events for um, selection changed. So whenever the selection changed then you can get the selected items or you can set the selected items. So there's all kinds of options here for selecting things in this uh, collection view as well. Um, it will be a nice exercise for you to go check out what is all available here. Um, now, another cool thing. Um, actually, let me stop the application for a little bit. I'm not sure. Well, actually, I am sure it works with hot reload. Um, but what is happening is we've now loaded the data and we do not have any way to unload the data. Um, except for restarting the application. And I want to show you the empty view. So let's stop the debugging right here. And we can set the empty view in a couple of different ways. So uh, if you're unaware, kind of like setting um, properties like this is preferred whenever you're going to do complex things like this, right? But you can also definitely set the, the, the exact same thing here with the items layout um, like this as an attribute, right? So if you have a easier way of, of notating things, then you can definitely do it as well. And that's the same thing for our empty view. So our empty view, you can say set the empty view like this, or you can set it with an empty view template. So you can provide a template for that. Um, and then you have, and again, a couple of options. You can just specify a string and that will show up as a string in the center of the screen as a message to the user. So um, no monkey business here. Um, and whenever we now load kind of like the initial um, thing here for Android, we're going to see that label first um, because there is nothing to see yet. And it will show that to the user. So whenever you have this scenario um, where you don't have any data, whether it's because you're filtering through your collection view and there is no results, uh, it will show this little message. Or you did just didn't load the application, the data yet, it will show this message as well. So this is like a nice, easy way to get started. But what you can also do is if we go back to our XAML live preview here and we remove this one and I bring in a little bit of extra code here. Um, you can again do this in a more complex way. So um, let's add this and you can see whenever you're going to specify properties like this, um, you can have multiple things like 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 these blocks here, right? You can say collection view dot and then the property name and in between you can specify like your complex things. Um, and while I was talking, you have a little spoiler alert here. Um, you can see that it now has this empty view with a nice image that we've already had in our project, uh, which we are centering like in the middle of our screen. And you can see that we have this nice little graphic, um, you can put any complex layout in here um, while the application is, well, the data is empty. Um, so whenever, you know, we end up with empty data, it's going to not show the um, records anymore or the layout that you have set up, but it will now show this empty view to make clear to the user that it it's, is actually empty. And, um, you know, so let's switch to actually Windows. So let's stop this for a little bit and see and prove to you that this actually also just runs on Windows. So let's just do that. Um, we're going to go to Windows and here it's kind of like interesting, right? You might also, this is also a nice exercise for you uh, because the items layout might make more sense to make it a grid on kind of like a bigger screen whenever you're running on the desktop, right? To have the little grid and that shows a little bit nicer than the long kind of like bars um, that you would see on, on mobile. Um, so that's a nice exercise for you, how to figure out how to make the difference between Windows and Android and, and, and uh, make it happen between those. But you can see this empty view 
also works here for Windows. And then whenever we, we get the monkeys, you can see the little loading, loading indicator. And now the empty view disappears and we have our data back here. So that's also a nice little UX feature um, so that you can uh, show to your users that actually there is no data. The component is there. Everything is in order. That's always very important for users. Like, hey, there's nothing wrong, uh, but you just don't have any data right now. Um, so this is kind of like a, a deeper dive into collection view and all the possibilities there. But you know, you're becoming a little bit of a Don Maui expert right now. So feel free to experiment a little bit with this on your own. So how did you like that? There is a lot to unpack in the collection view. I already mentioned there's also the carousel view that kind of like is a specialized way. So you can also show the monkeys in kind of like a carousel way and scroll through that. So like I said, you're becoming a .NET Maui expert right now. We're just progressing through this course. There's not many parts left. We just have the one on application themes after this. And then I have a little wrap up application to, you know, set you free. Um, we spent so much time together um, and, and point you to a couple of resources that will help you learn even more and how to get started uh, with a real world application, the billion dollar application that's going to make you rich. So we're almost at the end. You're almost a .NET MAUI expert. And I have a nice little surprise for you to actually prove that to the world. So make sure to stay tuned. Um, so feel free to experiment with the collection view, the carousel view, all the things here. Um, so I already mentioned the next video is going to be about the app themes. Make sure to go to the video here and review the playlist for the full course here. And of course, make Make sure to subscribe, do that here. See you for the next one.